Okay, we have now studied phonemes and syllables, and we are finally ready to study two very important phonological rules from English, flapping and aspiration. So we've been talking about aspiration since the beginning of the week. In English, there are some stops that have very strong puffs of air, as you can see from pat, for example. And there are some words that don't have that puff of air, for example, spot. So same P, two very different effects. Pat, spot. But we have neglected to mention some examples of P and other stops in English, such as happy. Happy, no puff. So what exactly is going on with those uh, stops? We're going to look at that. But we're going to begin with a very important rule in the English of North America, of Australia, and New Zealand, the flapping of stops. So in many dialects, the word butter is pronounced butter. The sound here is not a stop, but rather an alveolar tap, as you can see from the symbol. Butter. So where do we get this tap, which is also called a flap or a flapped T? So this is some beautiful data from English. Uh, you can see that on the left column we have alveolar stops like T, for example in right, date, mat. We also have um, alveolar D as in ride, lad, and mad. And we had a T in betrothed. So these are stops. On the other hand, here we have examples of the tap. For example, this one in rider, rider, ladder, dating, matter, and also matter. So here we have these uh, sounds in English. Some of them are stops, some of them are taps. The first thing I want you to do is don't extract the environments just yet. Just look at the data. Try to generate some preliminary hypotheses for why sometimes you see a T and sometimes you see the tap. By the way, spoiler alert, these are two uh, allophones of the same phoneme T. But what I wanted to try and figure out is when, when do we see the tap? I want you to don't extract the environments, just look at the data. And I'm going to give you a hint. It has to do with syllables and with stress. Give it a try. Please pause the video. All right. Where do we find the tap? How about this? The taps appear in unstressed syllables. So we have some syllables like mat, where we see the full stop. However, here, the um, uh, alveolar sound is in a syllable where it does not get stress. This one is a trochee, which has a, first, a strong syllable first and then a weak one second. Matter. Matter. And as a matter of fact, if you look at all of them, rider, ladder, dating, all of them, uh, all of the taps occur in syllables that are unstressed. So maybe that's the pattern. And by the way, I this is just what the environments would look like. I extracted everything that was in the same syllable as either the stops or the tap, just for you to uh, look at the example. Here, for example, in number one, we would have the stressed, the stressed symbol and then ry, t, and then the edge of the word in this case. In example seven, we have the edge of the syllable, symbolized here by the dot, then the tap, r, here, and then r. So I extracted everything in the same syllable and up to the syllable edge. And you can see that these environments are in complementary distribution because the stop only happens with stressed syllables, whereas the r only happens not just in unstressed syllables, but at the edge of unstressed syllables. It's always right next to the syllable edge. So maybe the rule is something like this. We have a T phoneme, which becomes a tap, 
whenever it's the first sound or right on the syllable edge of an unstressed syllable and as in writer or in ladder so this is the rule for the tap in many dialects of English we have the phoneme T which becomes a tap and then there's the edge of the syllable and that syllable is unstressed and the first position in that syllable is where you will see the phoneme and so this triggers uh, that a T at the edge of an unstressed syllable syllable becomes a tap as in writer by the way D also has this rule so a D would become a tap in the exact same environment so as you can see phonological rules can interact not just with segments but with syllables let's look at a second example aspiration so we have this data from before uh, the one the examples one two six and seven are old and we have seen them for the aspirated p as in pat versus spat one has a puff of hair the other one doesn't this pattern also extends to other voiceless stops in English, such as T and K, as in top versus stop. Top, stop. For example, with K, car, scar. This one has a stronger puff. So we could just, um, and this, as you can see, we can see this one and then the unaspirated ones only happen in this one environment, only happen when they are preceded by the S, as in spat, as in stop, and as in scar. So because these are more limited, we could posit these as the base for the phoneme. So the aspirated P becomes unaspirated whenever it is preceded by an S. And by the way, we could generalize this to all of the stops by saying that a consonant that is an aspirated voiceless stop becomes a non-aspirated voiceless stop whenever it is preceded by an S. So this rule works to explain the data we have seen so far. Let's, let's look at more data. Here uh, examples 1, 2, 6, and 7 are repeated from before, but I've thrown in some more examples. For example, words 3, 4, and 5 have aspirated consonants in the middle of a word, like apply, attack, acquire. And examples eight, nine, and 10 have unaspirated consonants in the middle of a word, as in happy, salty, lucky, unaspirated. So again, don't extract the environments just yet. Just look at the data Try to think in terms of syllables and stress and try to figure out where do we find the aspirated stops. Please pause the video. How about this? The aspirated stops only appear in one environment, really. They appear whenever they are the first sound of a stressed syllable. For example, we have apply where this one is the first um, sound of the stressed one, whereas happy has the P phoneme in an unstressed uh, syllable. So you can't engage the environment and it just remains unaspirated. By the way, again, these would be the environments. I, I extracted them just for you to see what they would look like. But as you can see, they are in complementary distribution because the aspirated ones only appear in stressed syllables and um, by the way they all they only appear again at the edge of stressed syllables as the first sound of a stressed syllable whereas the unaspirated ones have a, a more variety of environments sometimes there's stress sometimes there's not sometimes there's an s sometimes there's a vowel and so forth so maybe this is the more general case and the aspirated one is the more specific one and then we can say that an unaspirated p becomes aspirated when it is the first sound first sound of a stressed syllable and this is the rule for the aspiration of voiceless stops in english for the t the k and the p so for example this would apply to car because it's the first sound of a stressed syllable it would not apply to scar 
because the first sound is the S, not the K. So this environment cannot be engaged. Uh, the, this environment does not occur and the rule cannot be engaged. Again, you need to be the first sound of a stressed syllable for you to become aspirated. And by the way, I do want to reiterate that linguistics is a science because look at what we did. In, when we looked at the data first, we assumed that the aspirated P was the base and then we said that it became unaspirated whenever it was preceded by the S, as in spin. However, as we got more data, we realized that maybe there was a better rule. Maybe we could have the unaspirated as the base and then say that the, uh, the, the P became aspirated when it was the first sound of a stressed syllable. So we changed our hypothesis when we got new data. And this is the scientific method. So in summary, syllables can be part of phonological rules. English has some very complex rules, and I uh, gave you just two of them. The flapping of the T and the D, which can, uh, transforms these stops into taps in unstressed syllables, like in butter. Uh, we also looked at the aspiration of P, T, and K in stressed syllables, like car. And we had a tiny example of how linguistics is a science because sometimes we need to switch hypotheses whenever we come upon new data. In the next video, we'll talk about the phonology of sign languages.